Hi guys, it's Sabrina, and you know, I want to make sure the hair is on point, which I thought I did, um, but I feel well tried to. So hi, it's Sabrina Walker Hernandez with Supporting World Hope. I'm trying something a little new, so I'm hoping you can hear me, and you know what I do first. I just want to make sure that you can hear and see me, and it is streaming live. So until then, I do a little bit of jam out in my head. And I am, uh, I am checking to make sure that Facebook Live is doing what Facebook Live said it would do. So we are live. And today, again, is my blog summary, Nine Steps to a Donor Center Fundraising Approach. And what I want to make, ha make sure that you understand is that I'm Sabrina Walker Hernandez, President and CEO of Supporting World Hope. I help small nonprofits um, build relationships and board development with the end goal of increasing fundraising. I truly believe that um, fundraising is the key. I believe that building relationships is the key to fundraising and also that it starts with your board of directors. And so I do these blog summaries. I write a blog once a week and I do these summaries because um, I want to impact those small nonprofit CEOs, um, executive directors, and founders um, because I know that you're in the stress of things. You're over, you're feeling overwhelmed, you're often underpaid or not getting paid, um, and you just don't have time to actually read a blog. Um, and so I do these recordings so that you can listen to them while you're in your car so you can create a mobile university and you can listen to them while you're in your car. I do upload them to YouTube. I have them on LinkedIn. Of course, um, they are here on Facebook and soon they will also be on Instagram TV. So I'm trying to cover multiple platforms so that wherever you connect, you can then listen to these um, and create that mobile university. That does not cost you any other time because you can listen to them when you're going from point A to point B in your car. And so that is the ultimate goal uh, for this. And so with that, here is um, what I am going to be talking about this week. Um, you can find, if you want to read the original blog post, of course, you can find it at supportingworldhope.com backslash blog. And I also publish, publish it on Medium. So just, just to give you that as a reference point. So. Here we go. Um, blog summary, nine steps to a donor center fundraising approach. So the most effective type of donor cultivation is donor center approach. In this approach, nonprofits seek to discover um, as much as they can about the potential donor. It is not wise to rush the discovery process. Like an onion, it needs to be peeled one layer at a time. So, I want you to be patient. There are certain things that must take place. Donors, uh, donors talk more than the nonprofit leader. Leader, nonprofit leaders ask more than tell, and nonprofit staff or leaders talk about gift giving opportunities only after they have uncovered what the donor wants to accomplish. So how do you do that? Here are the nine steps to a donor-centered fundraising process. First, you have to plan donor meetings. To ensure that you cover all the bases with potential donors, it is important to plan a strategy for each interaction. You may want to plan such things as your meeting objectives, the questions you'll ask, how to handle any issues or concerns the donor raises, benefits of giving to your nonprofit, et cetera. Things like that is what you wanna make sure that you're planning out and you know what you're gonna talk about. Two, you're gonna opening the relationship. This step enables you to build rapport and establishes expectations for a positive outcome. It is often begun in public or on a nonprofit visit where the donor feels less vulnerable. 
learning about and relating to their interests will open the door to discovery. Now, I know with the pandemic, you may not be offering um, visits, but it is fine to offer a visit um, if you keep that visit to your office or you can do it on Zoom. But the whole goal is to make the donor feel less vulnerable. Three, moving from public visits to nonprofit visits to personal visits. Visits with a donor in their home indicates a level of closeness to the nonprofit and often takes months to achieve. It is okay if you never make it to their home. I had many of donors that I never made it to their home, but we had a great relationship because office visits are just as personal. In an office visit, you can pick up a lot of clues about the donor, such as where they attend college, some of their hobbies, family dynamics, etc. And then you can incorporate that into your stewardship and your thank you. You know, if you know that someone attended a college and you see something that they might, might like from their alma mater or that has their alma mater logo, you can just take it, drop it by their office, say, hey, I don't need to see them. I just saw this and I thought they would like it. Um, things like that. So it also allows you to um, Number four is investigating the donor needs. You're going to find out what's important to the donor, including their reasons and emotions for supporting your nonprofit, their gift giving potential or financial position, how decisions about their gifts are made, concerns or reservations they have about making a gift to your nonprofit. Five, asking permission to present a proposal. This is the classic pre-ask, designed to help you discover how willing the donor is to consider a gift. Six, resolving donor concerns. Uncover and address in a rational way what the objections to a gift may be, and pro providing ways for the donor to overcome issues and concerns. Seven, Presenting donor benefits. This step allows the nonprofit to provide information about how a gift um, can help donors achieve goals and solve problems. You notice that wording, help donors achieve goals and solve problems. Benefit relates directly to what the donor has said, it, what is important to them. So it's donor centered, don't forget that. Eight, you're gaining donor commitment. Effective nonprofit leaders get agreement and commitment from donors during every interaction. It is important to ask for a commitment, not only at the end, but also at every step along the way, even if it's a commitment to time and expertise. Nine, ongoing stewardship. Now, this is not in the blog, but I. this is a soapbox issue for me. You have to thank your donors. You don't get the gift and then leave them high and dry. You will not get a repeat gift if you do that. And so I've given to several or organizations over a couple months and one knocked it out of the park. They hand delivered some uh, a thank you note to my home with some, uh, my fit, my favorite, favorite bump cakes. And so I want to just give a little shout out to Vamos um, because of the seven that day, they were the only ones that I received a personalized thank you. And I will be giving to them again. And oftentimes your donors will feel that way. And I know sometimes you feel like, oh, we got the gift. So I'm going to leave them alone for a while. You can't leave them alone. You need to send a thank you. You need to share with them how that gift, um, uh, made a difference in what you did with that money. So again, nine, ongoing stewardship. It's an often overlooked step. Stewardship, saying thank you, can smooth the way for future gifts or referrals from donors. Now, when you start getting those referrals from donors, you are in there. So donor center fundraising puts satisfying donor needs up front and center. Our job as a nonprofit is to help our donors see themselves as a hero. 
Um, and so that is what this blog summary was about. Um, I hope that this helps you. And I love to hear from you on how you are ensuring um, donor, center, uh, donor center involvement. So sharing is caring. Um, the last thing that I am going uh, to leave with you is how to get in contact with me and how to find all the resources that I have. I am going to say um, that I do have a VIP resource library that is free to you um, that you can access. I'll also say, you know, I do free consultations and I have a very active non-profit uh, professional exchange Facebook group. And you can find out about all of these services and others that I offer by just visiting www.supportingworldshope.com. Again, visit www dot supporting world hope dot com and with that i will say your mission matters and deserves to be fun fully funded and i'll say good night to all of you and have a great day